So the so whoa, we just got a subscription. <laughs> All right, so if you're new, subscribe. It's a little early, but you get the point. So the Cha Hain and other character stuff coming to Soul Leveling Rise data mines have been out for a couple of days, but I wanted to cover their kits and what they can do. Uh, also, let me know in the comments if you guys are excited about these characters. Are you going to be summoning for them, etc.? I'm not sure if one of these will be a free character by chance. I don't really know. This game has so many questions. We don't know how they're going to handle so many things until they've done it and set a precedent, right? So we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, I, re I don't remember that chick in the middle. I do not remember Alicia here uh, at all. So there's that. What's going to happen with this game, and they've already done it when you look at some of the other characters, is they're taking some super obscure characters that were in the background for some of that stuff and making them like actual playable characters in this game to really pad out the roster, which I'm cool with. But it leads to me not remembering some of these other characters. She may be a prominent character in the series. In fact, I don't know if she's even an original character. Maybe she's original. I don't know. But but I just don't remember. Anyway. I do remember Tahin though, and I'm super excited about Tahin coming. She's going to be so fun to play in this game, and she is just my favorite character in the series other than Janu. So I'm excited for that. All right, so we're going to take a look at some of these characters, like I said. So full disclosure, um, these are data mines. Shout out to the Mastoel. Check them out over on Twitter at Arm Genesis, so you guys can follow them. I'll also do so myself in a minute. Um, full disclosure, I've covered so many gacha games on my channel over the course of like eight years or whatever, and I've also covered a lot of new characters and data mines, things like that. By the way, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at dfreedbz. It's not popping up. You'll see that later, I guess. Um, I've covered so many stuff, and the point is, is that when it comes to this game, it's a little tricky because the data mine and the way that the game lays it out, just aside from the data mine, it's kind of weird. Because what they do is they'll tell you what the skill does, and then in in the reading of the skill, they'll tell you that it triggers this effect. Then you have to scroll all the way to the bottom in the game to see what the effects do, right? So I'm going to take this data mine a little bit differently. We're actually going to cover what those effects do first because it's, they're going to reference the other effects like a lot, right? So it's kind of tricky. Um, so the, one of the things that actually I guess I can't, is there no extra page that explains what the skills do? Interesting. Okay. No, so maybe not. The reason why I wanted to do it that way is because Chahain is doing things like branded, which there may be other characters that are putting that out, but there's no actual description from what I saw. Uh, so anyway, it's all right. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but I guess in the future, I'll try to do it that way. So, um, here's how she looks. So her normal attack is a attack with her swinging her sword quickly. It does light damage. So she's a light elemental character. So that's pretty interesting. There's already a few SSR light characters. So not, and then there's good SR light characters too, like Kim Chu. Like, I don't really know if we needed another light character, but light's cool. All right. Hayne performs a series of slashes with her core attack at incredible speed. So, obviously, her doing a lot of quick slashes or attacks like that is totally in character for the character in the series. Um, but in the game, that's actually really interesting because it's going to lead to her being an extremely strong critical hit character because she's going to be a fast mover that's going to get out a lot of quick attacks. So, her critical chance is going to be super important. So, whether that's artifacts or anything like that on her, improving her, her skills... They're going to want to get as many crits on her as possible. That's going to really, really spike her damage, right? So she's that type of character. So anyway, we take a look at her skill. Basic skill one. So this one is called the Dancer. This skill is called the Dancer, and it's super important. So Hayin attacks the enemy by swinging her sword quickly. Uh, and it says Hayin, uh, Hayin, Hayin uh, uses her sword to swiftly slash through a large area in the direction she is facing. When this skill hits, is it Hayin or Hayin? I'm still on that. Tahain. That's how I normally say it. Is it Tahain? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, anyway, when the skill hits, it has a 66% chance to apply the brand effect on the target. And the branded target's critical hit rate and critical hit damage taken increases by 12% for 15 seconds. Okay. So to recap, when you use this skill, it has a 66% chance to apply the brand effect. There is no description in the right now for what I can see on this data mine for what Brand does. Maybe there's another character in the game that's placing it that you can see. But the way I'm looking at this is maybe it's some sort of just marking on the opponent. That's literally what it means when you say branding. But maybe it's a marking on the opponent and it doesn't really do anything other than that by itself. So what happens is when the target has a brand on them, they are more likely to take a critical hit. And she is going to do more damage with said critical hits. So the crit hit rate and crit hit damage increases by 12% for 15 seconds. So that is really strong. And also, if the user's skill lands a critical hit, 
it applies another effect called Waltz of the Sword, which we'll see in a moment. And she can use the Dancer infinitely for four seconds. So if she lands a crit, so again, to recap, 66% chance to land a brand. And if you land a brand, the opponent's going to be more likely to take a critical. And if they take a critical, it's going to be more damage because the crit damage is increased. And if the Dancer basic skill one lands a critical hit, it'll apply the Waltz of the Sword effect. And she can use the Dancer infinitely for four seconds. So she can just spam the Dancer. I need to see this in actual gameplay to see how it looks. But uh, it's on paper, it sounds pretty damn insane. Now, what is the Waltz of the Sword? Um, that one I'm also not seeing here. Is it her passive name? I'm not sure. I'm not really seeing it. It looks like maybe there's some more branding stuff in her passive. So yeah, the data mines are gonna need to. I'm not gonna say improve because I don't. I'm not. That's not. That's not fair to the data miner. Uh, but we are still obviously without information. So I guess we'll get to that when we get to it. Skill two, um, she slashes the enemy continuously with a large sword. So that's very, very strong. And then finishes with a combination uh, powerful strike. So when using the skill two, when using this skill, the dancer effect is applied. So it's gonna trigger. So when you use the second skill, it basically triggers skill one again. I don't think it'll do the whole attack animation and all that stuff, all the hits again and all that stuff. It'll just trigger the effect, which will do the branding and then the critical, all that stuff, right? And after it triggers the effect, the user's attack and critical hit damage increase by 8% up to three times. So she's going to just start doing so much more damage. <laughs> she is going to start doing a lot of damage with criticals and by default, by raising her critical attack and crit damage by eight up to three times means it maxes out at 24 uh, percent i'm not sure what level this skill is or if that improves with more level we'll see uh when you, one sort of light which is this skill hits it also applies the unrecoverable effect and the re unrecoverable effect is a debuff on the opponent that prevents them from recovering so really really strong she's gonna just she's gonna absolutely shred with the critical hits all right her support skill so she Quickly launches them in the air. Afterwards, she attacks the enemy with a large slash with her Sword of Light. When the skill is used on a branded target, its damage increases by 15%. So when she switches in for her support attack, if the opponent is branded, it's going to do an extra damage, 15% uh, more damage. Now, that, I'm not sure if any of Janu's weapons actually are able to increase, uh, or actually, excuse me, are able to place branding, or if any of his skills that he has places brandings. Uh, so that wouldn't really matter there. But in other content where you're using her and you're using two other characters, you know, she can just place the branding herself. And then, you know, as you're, you know, switching around, then obviously she would get the benefit of that. So very, very strong otherwise. Excuse me for the pop-up. Her QTE, uh, she creates a sword of light, jumps in the air and slashes down powerfully. When the last attack of this skill hits successfully, it applies the unrecoverable effect to the target for 15 seconds. So it says that she hits them. Oh no, she creates a sword, jumps in the air, and lands it. So if she happens to land that hit, she'll do another unrecoverable debuff where they can't heal for 15 seconds. If she misses, obviously you're getting nothing out of it. So there's that. Her ultimate. She gathers light energy in her sword, creates a sword of light, and slashes in a powerful diagonal line in the direction she is facing. What's the range on that? If the rate, it sounds like she's creating a big energy sword. It, it's making me think of Trunks in Dragon Ball Super, where he does that to Zamasu. He just creates a big old energy sword, except except maybe bigger, right? Ah, uh, that spirit bomb sword thing. Maybe bigger. I don't know. What's the range on that? Because that could be really strong as an ultimate skill. And it says powerful in a diagonal line, so it's going to be really, really strong. Um. So anyway, when the skill hits, it increases our critical hit rate by X for X seconds. Okay. Shaheen's damage to the target with weakness attributes increases by X percentage. So if she's taking on an enemy that has a weakness to light element, she's going to do a lot more damage with this ultimate too. Uh, Hain, uh, Hain, Hain, there it is again, inflicts the brand effect on the target for X seconds. And her damage dealt to branded targets increases by 30%. What are these X's? I guess we'll have to see it in the passive. Her passive skill. Every time the user's core attack, every time she uses the core attack, increases attack by X percentage, stacks up to X amount of time. I guess we don't have those numbers. But using her core attack will give her a permanent attack increase. That's pretty insane. And it's an infinite duration. That's that's actually pretty insane. Just using her core attack does that. And the core attack's so easy, you just spam basics to do it. All right. 
increases the max amount of stacks of the dancer to X stacks as well. Increases the critical hit rate by X. So, again, her dancer skill is one that she can also spam infinitely. Uh, and it was saying that you only were getting how many stacks of it? Well, it was only for four seconds. So, it's not really saying anything about stacks, if I remember correctly. But the passive is saying that she also, by using her core attack, is able to get more attack. Use the dancer stacks more. Increase the user's critical hit rate as well. And when attacking a branded target, increases the skill damage of the Dancer and of Sword of Light. Oh my god. <laughs> the user's critical hit damage increases by X depending on the stack effect of the Dancer. Increases the, the damage of Light of End stacks up to 5 times. God damn. So, if I remember correctly, Choi is unable to crit. So, I think Choi is a high, high tier character right now. But if this is where the game is going, I, I regret to inform that unfortunately Choi is going to fall off pretty quickly. Because, and I don't know what quickly means. Maybe that means three months. Maybe it means six months. Obviously, we're going to need more characters to come out to push him down the totem pole. But these crits are going to age well. And if I remember correctly, he isn't able to crit. So the inability to crit being, that's, that's just a, such a dumb limitation. That is going to hold him back. So... I think right now the early output of damage he does is going to age really well uh, because the flat damage he does is really good. But these crits are going to spike like crazy, particularly as we get further in the game, have better artifact sets and stuff like that just from playing, right? It's going to be kind of insane. So that was a lot to kind of take in. But basically, in a gist, her playstyle is spam the basic. And then after that, spam skill one. You can use it infinitely as well once you start getting critical hits. And then her other two skills are just huge hitters. That's basically it, right? Uh, and then also the fun thing about the second skill was that it also solo leveling just subscribe. That's an amazing name. <laughs> I'm getting so many new subscribers as well. It's so awesome. So if you haven't already subscribed, uh, it's, you, you see that I have, a, I have a decent sized channel. I've been at it for a long time. It's really awesome to see the whole new audience coming in for this game. Um... And then, yeah, the second skill is awesome because it just kind of activates the effect of the first skill. So that's kind of interesting. So Alicia here, she is a water element character. I don't... Who's... Do we have a water element SSR? Because, like, Wu Jintil is, is wind, right? So is uh, Dong Su. And then the archer dude, Lim, I think is his name, is, is dark. Maybe... Oh, maybe Emma is water. No, Emma's fire. The other... Maybe she's uh, the other one, uh, C C O. Maybe she's water. I don't. I don't remember a water one. So anyway, if we didn't have a water one, we certainly are gonna start getting some, and we need some. This power beats little thing on the side is like super distracting me. <laughs> I can't even get rid of it. Oh my god! Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> so yeah, I don't remember, but we need water if we don't have any. So attacks the enemy continuously by summoning ice crystals. That sounds fun. So off the bat, she's a magic user. She's attacking from a distance. Are the ice crystals going to be just projectiles she launches forward from like a wand or something? It didn't look like she had any staff. Or, oh, she does. Okay, so never mind. She's going to be doing that. She's definitely a mage, and uh, that's cool. Her art is really good. The art in this game is amazing. Netmarble, it, it looks like Netmarble art. Like they got some of their main artists on it, but they're doing a nice job with soul leveling art. Um, okay, so I was wondering if, like, the, the ice would fall on them or something like that. Something silly, right? So the Frost Arrow, the core attack. Uh, Alicia attacks the enemy by piercing them with multiple ice fragments. Okay. So her kit is much smaller than Chahain's as well. Oh, never mind. My bad. <laughs> All right, so skill one. Um, so attacks the enemy by summoning a Icy Whirlwind. The summoned Icy Whirlwind um, moves in the direction enter. That sounds a lot like uh, like Park's ability, right? Park, Park Eugene? She's a, she's a wind mage, right? Sounds very similar to hers. Um, and then percentage of the user's attack stat, so that's fine. Lace attacks the enemy by summoning an icy world one. I already mentioned that. So uh, damage is X percentage of the user's attack. Cooldown is unknown. MP consumption, unknown. When the skill hits, it has a 30% chance to freeze the target. By the way, if you didn't see my video on the Thetis' Grimoire, and you can, you can kind of test this out with that one blue-haired SR chick. Um, freezing is insane in this game. There's just so much utility to freezing. You can you can do so many different things. So freezing is absurd in this game. So keep that in mind. Um, anyway, when the skill hits, there's a 30% chance to freeze the target for three seconds. So not the highest chance, but it's also skill one. Uh, assuming that the cooldown isn't massive, this will be really easy to spam. 
All right, so attacks the enemy with skill two by creating a large icy terrain that detonates. Ooh, a terrain attack? Oh, that sounds kind of crazy. That sounds kind of crazy. Okay, deals water damage, and when the skill hits, it inflicts the airborne effect. Ooh, <laughs> she's she seems like she's going to be super useful for just uh, control and stuff like that. That's really interesting. Going airborne on them is really strong. All right. So ice detonation, her support skill. Alicia attacks the enemy by creating an ice field that detonates. So she's still doing the detonation uh, or the terrain thing, right? The, uh, creating an ice field on her support skill. Actually, it doesn't literally say terrain though. Ice needle is the name of that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's the same thing. Maybe it's not as grandiose, right? Anyway, when the skill is used, it applies the ice body armor effect to the entire team. Is it a shield? It's a shield, isn't it? When ice body armor is active, it removes all debuffs. Wow. This skill creates a shield, obviously. Yeah, had to be a shield. E I'm not mad at that. Equal to 20% of the user's attack for 8 seconds. If the user or an ally is hit while the shield is uh, as active, it freezes the target that attacked them for... Oh, my God. <laughs> For three seconds, and the target that has already been frozen once can be frozen again after 30 seconds. So you can't just permanently freeze them. They have to. There's a 30 second cooldown in between freezing. I wonder if I wonder if I could like switch to Thetis's grimoire and then freeze them again with that. I wonder. Well, the thing about Thetis's grimoire, it doesn't actually say it freezes. It says it interrupts them, and it doesn't say it free. It has a different terminology on it, but that might just be. Some translation stuff. Maybe it's the exact same effect. I mean, it, it works this time. I'm not sure. But, oh my god. <laughs> so they take all debuffs off and get a shield. And if they get touched, everyone gets freaking, uh... What's it called? Frozen. This will be really strong on those maps where you're, you, you take in three characters or four, whatever it is, four characters. And everyone is separate, right? And when it's, not, when it's not one of those ones where, like, it's just one and you keep switching around. It's so funny how the game's laid out. Like, sometimes you have Janu all by himself and you just switch the support characters, uh, just you know, using their support skill. Or there are times where on the last fight they all come out and fight alongside you. Or there's no Janu at all. And it's, you know, one character it supports or it's one character or all the guys and no Janu. It's just weird. <laughs> It kind of just depends on what you're doing. But nonetheless, that's really strong. <laughs> that's it. That's her support skill. That's really damn strong. All right. Her QTE attacks the enemy by creating a large icy terrain that detonates again with the terrain thing on her QTE. Usage condition is a core attack, the ultimate skill. So to use the QTE, you need to do the core attack. So on the core attack, that's kind of insane. Okay. Ultimate skill as well. When this skill hits, it inflicts the airborne effect. When the last attack in the combo hits, it freezes the target. This skill interrupts the target. God damn, so much freezing. So, like, Chahin, I think, is more more flashy damage and more stuff like that. But this character is going to be crazy. He's going to be crazy. I think particularly if we get a really good water damage dealer for, like, a water team composition. And unless I'm not forgetting somebody. I don't think I am. He's going to be really strong. The ultimate, taking off her sad memories. The user unleashes a chill strong enough to freeze her surroundings and attack enemies while they are frozen. I can morph. She freezes on everything. God damn. Um, deals water damage when the last attack in the combo hits and inflicts the airborne. When the last attack hits, uh, it does a freeze. And when this, and then this skill also applies five stacks of the frost effect on the user. What is frost? Frost is the skill interrupts the target. Wait, is that like a super armor thing? Is that is that is that like a super armor thing? Getting five stacks of it means it triggers five times. You're not using your ultimate in any fight five times due to the timer. So like can she just like interrupt their their actions? By the way, when it says interrupts, like I just mentioned, interrupt is used on Thetis Grimoire. So, like, can she just, like, do a basic attack and freeze them with that to interrupt their action? Because that's the exact same word that's used on Thetis Grimoire. Okay, the passive. When the user uses Winter Storm, Eternal Frost, or Ice Needle, so basically any goddamn thing. Eternal Frost is the ultimate, and then the other two, I believe, are her first two skills. Ice Needle and Winter Storm, yeah. So the first two skills are the ultimate. Um, they gain the Frost effect, which can be stacked up to five times. When Again, so... She, 
So she just for the pat. So why not just make it say that on those those skills instead of putting it in the passive? So no matter what she does, she gets frost. So it's kind of redundant to also list it on the ultimate as well because she gets it anyway from the passive, and it's the same number of stacks. Whatever. When the user obtains the frost effect, it activates their core attack and changes it to bitter cold spear. Bitter cold spear changes every time the frost effect stacks and up to three instances of frost can be consumed at once. Now, wait a damn minute. That's a whole different meaning of this skill. So, okay, I see it now. Her core attack has frost arrow and bitter cold spear. So I'm guessing they, they have the same description because there's not a second description. It's just probably a much stronger one because it's an enhanced core attack. So when she has more stacks, it does more damage is how I'm reading this. It activates her core attack and changes it. Bitter Cold Spear changes every time the Frost effect stacks. So it says it changes. I'm guessing it has more spears or a bigger spear or something when you have more stacks. So it's actually not redundant to put it on the ultimate because doing the ultimate would give you would give you ten stacks is the way it's reading, because it doesn't say you can stack five up to a maximum of ten or a maximum of eight or whatever anything weird like that, um, and then it says you can use three of the stacks at once. So using the skill will will eat away three stacks, but that's redundant because that's on the core attack. That just means you need to use another skill. So the way she's designed. Skill cooldown sets for her are going to be kind of insane. Skill cooldown on her is going to be crazy. Uh, we don't have any information on the beast guy. I remember him. I just don't remember. His name. Um, maybe he's just a boss, though, so we don't need any information on him. Yeah, so the way skill cooldown on her is going to be kind of crazy. I'm sure there's an artifact set for that. In fact, I've seen it for the at least for the ultimate. I haven't seen it for the regular ones, but I'm going to still look into artifacts more. Uh, the point is that these characters are insane. Uh, obviously, skills are subject to to change, you know, based on when they release. So he also mentions here the raid up after Choi Jung In is. Oh, oh, that's that's Baek Yunho. That's right in his final form, final form. Um, I was like, I was like, I remember, I recognize him, but it's my first time seeing him in this art. I almost thought he was a boss monster. I'm not say, I'm not sure if this person is saying all three of these hunters will be on one banner or if it's one then another then another. That probably is more likely where it's just her by herself based on the precedent sent with Choi Jong In. They're probably going to do uh Chahein next by herself and then the following banner will be Alicia. And I I'm assuming this will probably pop up next week for Chahein. They did also do a roadmap before the game was released on that Netmarble stream. I'm not sure exactly uh you know how things are looking. So this this is interesting. So the point is also start saving, but we don't have any information on Baek Yunho in his beast form yet. Not that I saw. There's also just for the record some other stuff listed for these other hunters. As, excuse me as well. They are in the files. So they are going to be coming at some point, which is not a surprise, right? But even like some of the more like you know these guys are cool. These top row guys are cool, but they're not like you know huge characters. Not like the bottom row guys. So anyway. This was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe like some of the other people did throughout the video. And uh, leave any comments if you have any. Also, if you have any ways I can improve telling, like breaking down the data mines for these characters in the future, please let me know because I'm still figuring out how, to, how I want to cover this type of content for this game. Anyway, have an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next one.